This is AndyTube and I'm so happy to welcome you back and to start the first video in a new mini-series How to Restore a Singer PA Style Sewing Machine Motor and if you watched a, a couple of the coming attractions you know this thing was delayed something about between Fort Sumner and Albuquerque and weather conditions but ta-da it came in the late afternoon mail delivery so <laughs> I'm excited yippee -o -kai -a. so uh, this first video is going to be an intro to the series and an unboxing while I while I tell you what the series is going to be about and uh, let me get a knife to start cutting this open. But um, my my goal for this series is to show you how to clean and uh, replace brushes if necessary on the motor. Now I've done a couple other videos about how to take the motor out of the machine, and I'll put. Um, on the end screen of the video I will put links to one or both of those videos so if you don't know how to get the motor out of the machine um, you can watch those videos and you'll see it's very it's very easy you know a screwdriver maybe a pair of pliers and and you have the motor out so let's take a look here now it's like pretty good packing better than average. I buy most of my motors and original vintage parts off of eBay. Some I've bought off of a site called Bonanza. And uh, this motor I won an auction with a bidding price of $22.65 including uh, postage. And it said the motor was tested and and it was taken out of a Singer 403, Singer Model 403. So I got that one because I, I do a lot of the 400 and 500 series. And uh, yeah, let me just take this open. So I've had good success with buying motors off of eBay. And... Uh, this one looked to be in pretty average condition. Um, okay, I've got the typical oil varnishing up here, and uh, but it sounds real smooth. So it still has some brushes in there, and the bearings okay. I don't know. Can you hear that? contacts are good they're not bent and this is a, a PA 9-8 there's a few different PA models and the, 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 the model number will be stamped right here on the bottom and I think later they made some PAB and and so forth but it's 110 to 120 volt, and I think uh, 50 or 60 to 75 cycles. So it's a perfect motor for me. Varnishing, let me give it a little sniff test here. Oh, nice, very nice. No cigarette smell, just a little uh, sewing machine smell, a little old, you know, that kind of greasy, oily smell. Um, if you if you watch my slideshow of the parts, you know that these are some uh, vent holes around here, and uh, that there's a fan that actually sits up in here for the armature. And you can always tell when a when a uh, sewer smokes because this motor sits at the right hand uh, side of the sewing machine, 
um, you know, below the hand wheel, which this gear meshes up with, and they put their ashtray right off here to the side of the machine and that smoke gets drawn through the base of the machine and up in there and spreads around the machine so if you ever wonder how the inside of the sewing machine can smell like uh, tobacco and, and stuff but this one this one is nice I mean this is a good a good machine so uh, a good motor I don't even see I don't see any, uh, well, it, oh, eh. I don't even see any scratches on the screws or anything, so possibly it's never even been opened. Okay, so there is my beautiful, new to me, used, um, vintage Singer PA style motor. You know, in all the years I've never been able to find out what that PA is. Nobody seems to know. So after working with these and working with the old external motors and the inside, uh, other inside motors over the different Singer models, I, I mentioned before the PA for me is phenomenally awesome motor. A little self-contained unit there. So as we go through the series, uh, here's some things that you may uh, want to have on hand. Um, you want your safety equipment, you know, anytime you got a tool or you're using any chemicals. Um, some, I know some people wear a dust mask when they're working with the carbons. I've never found a, a necessity for it. But you, you'll see uh, as I go through the video and you can determine if that's something that you want to you wanna do. I like to wear... Um, gloves when I work on these because the brushes are made from carbon. Carbon soft, carbon dust, black carbon. And uh, you know it it's, gets on everything there and it gets impregnated in your skin and stuff. So I, I just use uh, gloves usually when I handle the motor for the cleaning and taking out the brushes and so forth like that. Um, your, your favorite straight blade screwdrivers um, you know, you got a couple of screws here and a screw, a screw uh, to take the motor out of the machine. So some straight blade screwdrivers. Uh, cleaning. This is my little spray bottle of uh, crud cutter, cleaner and degreaser, which I'll use on the outside parts. And it's very handy for the what I call the Bakelite or the plastic parts down here after you take them off. And uh, let's see, I also use alcohol. Uh, this is 91% uh, alcohol. And I've also used denatured alcohol um, for less residue. Uh, the first couple times I did this, I was advised to use a contact cleaner. And I, and I did, but um, I just didn't find it necessary. And most of them have alcohol as an ingredient. So if you're careful with the use of liquids around the commutator and stuff, you, 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 uh, alcohol should, should be enough. If you need anything, even, the alcohol should, should work for you. And, of course, your famous cotton buds are Q-tips to, uh, to get in there get some things clean. I also use these uh, makeup, I'm sure these are makeup remover because the, the picture always has a pretty lady wiping her face with these. Uh, these are my favorite because they're, they are cotton inside but they have this little woven cotton cover. So because there's plenty of things inside this motor that are going to snag a cotton cloth. So the uh, Q-tips are small enough you can be careful with, but if you, if you use a cotton pad or cotton square, I like to use these ones that have that uh, coating on. This comes as a bag of 80 for a dollar at the dollar store. So 
pretty pretty reasonable price. I'll have a microfiber towel to help me clean the outer body uh, and so forth. So I like to have one of those on hand. Uh, not a very big list really. You may need some needle nose pliers um, when you get into handling those those brush lead wires and, and stuff like that. Needle nose may come in handy for you. And uh, I use my little wood sticks, uh, barbecue sticks. You can use little cotton or cotton. <laughs> you can use a plastic. Um, but to, there's certain parts there uh, around that commutator that after you're cleaning and stuff, you want to be sure the little spaces are cleaned out. So uh, I like to use wood or plastic a lot. Um, I have flattened, you know, the little red coffee stir sticks. I've, I've smashed those flat and used an edge of that to clean it. So you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about as we go through the series. And a pocket knife can do the same thing, can help you get in the little tough spots if that carbon black and uh, copper dust gets, gets stuck in there. Um, I've had good success with this little Swiss Army knife with the with the can opener because it's you know it's shaped like a little finger and I can I can get it in those cracks and real gently scrape stuff out. But the metal you got to be careful with because you don't want to do any any damage. So first I try wood or plastic and. You, uh, if you want to clean the commutator and polish it, you're going to need some fine grit um, sandpaper. This is uh, 600 grit. Uh, that would be the roughest I would recommend. Uh, so something between 600 and 1200 grit. This is a wet dry paper. It's, uh, you know the same that I use for other things when I'm restoring the machines so gonna need a little bit of that and uh, I like to I like to have my little magnetic tray you know to keep to keep stuff uh, parts in there's not too many parts but I'm 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 inter internationally known for my ability to lose small parts so you know, a two-dollar magnetic uh, tray is is a very helpful tool for me. So I I'm trying to think of anything else. I think that that's really about it. So I think we'll bring video one to an end here. Like I said on the end screen, I'll put links to um, the videos about uh, how to remove the motor. I know I did that on some others, but you know, people may be coming here for the first time. And in part two, I'm, I know this is what people are most interested in, so we'll get right to it. In part two, I'll show you how you can quickly change the brushes on this machine. If that is your goal, you know, uh, how to do it. So of course you got to see what the brush is and what size and you have to order it and so forth. But I'm, I want to show that part right up front for my viewers and that will be part two. And then as we continue in the series it will just be about cleaning and, and uh, you know the little fiddly parts and the tricky parts and some time saving tips from my experience that I can give you. So yay we are started on how to clean a Singer PA or how to restore how to restore a Singer PA style motor I guess I'm tripping over my words cuz I'm so excited it finally got here okay so I hope I hope this got us off to a good start and we'll see you much sooner for part number 2 how to quickly change the brushes thank you so much for tuning in to Andy Tube take care